Heavenly Father, we, we come to you today and we thank you. We thank you that you always know what you're doing. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for us. We thank you that you've called us into your family, adopted us through the blood of Jesus and through the faith that he gives us in him. And Lord, we thank you that you've called us into this great mission, the commission, the great commission to go everywhere and proclaim Jesus to make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and to teach them to observe all things whatsoever Jesus taught us to observe. Remembering, that, Lord, that you are always with us to the end of the age. We thank you for this. And Lord, we lift up our leaders today to you. Father, you know what state our nation is in. Lord, I pray that you first draw our leaders' hearts to Jesus. If any are not saved, Lord, draw them to Jesus. Because Jesus said, no man comes to me unless the Father first draws him. So draw them, Lord, to you. Take the blinders off their hearts. Take the veils off their hearts. Whoever is not in Jesus yet. And Lord, those who are in Jesus now, Lord, I pray you protect them. Protect them from all the wiles of the enemy. Put your shield around them. And Lord, give all of our leaders your wisdom to lead this country well, according to your will, your plan, your desires. And Father, help us to live according to your will. To operate in our weeks, in our days, as your children. <laughs> and I think, Lord, of that verse that says, not grumbling or complaining, so that we may appear as your children to the rest of the world. Help us not to act and live like the world. Help us not be conformed to the image of this world, but Lord, help us be transformed into the image of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And Lord, give us the boldness that we need to speak what you give us to speak, to do what you call us to do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, the children already found pl a playground. <laughs> this is a great playground. I brought some paper along for anybody that wants to make some paper airplanes today. Young or young at heart. <laughs> um, also, let's turn in our Bible to the book of Joel today. Joel chapter 3, and you see I got my fancy mask today, so if I need to, I can go into a bank or catch a train, right? <laughs> uh, Joel chapter 3, the Lord brought me to this chapter, uh, a, a couple weeks ago, and I'm not entirely sure why yet, but I just want to read this to us, and actually, I want to start a few verses ahead of chapter 3 for some familiar uh, verses. Let's go back to chapter 2. Verse 21. He says, Fear not, O land, 
Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree bears her fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm with my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people, again, he says, my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. You see, the Lord is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't just pour out His Spirit on the leaders of the church. He doesn't just pour out His Spirit on those that have special giftings. Even on the handmaids and the servants, He says, In those days I will pour out My Spirit. So any of you who feel like maybe you've been left behind with God's giftings or whatever, be of good cheer. <laughs> We are in a day where He is pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. I've already heard some of them. Do it. <laughs> I've seen, I've witnessed it. Little ones, six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, have already been prophesying for the Lord, speaking forth the words of God. Get excited about that. I am. I'm excited to be living in this day. And then he says, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun should be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now as I read these words, the Lord put on me that that is not only about salvation, Absolutely, it is about our salvation in Jesus. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have not called on the name of the Lord Jesus to be saved from your sins, do it now. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus. I remember when I did. And boy, the transformation that started. And the peace just started flowing. And the... The shame and the guilt fell off of my shoulders. Shame and guilt from sins I'd been carrying for years. Just boom. And I was even outside that day when I called on the name of the Lord. But he put on me something else here. In Revelation... It says, he, shall, he that there shall endure to the end, 
shall be delivered. All those letters to the churches. And he that shall endure to the end shall be delivered. Same word. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I'm just reminded now of a friend of mine, a friend of ours, who I believe he's almost 80, if not 80 at this time. He, um, he trims trees for a living. I don't know if he's still doing it this year, but when I heard this story, he was. And he was in his late 70s at least. He was up in the tree. <laughs> and he started falling from the tree as he was cutting a limb. And he, he cried out. All he could think to cry out was, Jesus! And that's, that's all he said. And as he was falling, he grabbed this rope and he was, his hand was burning as he was falling in midair, just holding this rope. His hand was burning on the rope. He lands on the ground, on his back, flat on his back, right between two limbs that he had already put on the ground. He didn't land on the tree limbs. He landed right on the soft ground between the limbs with his hand burnt from that rope. <laughs> he was delivered. Now the crazy thing was that when he got up, he was thinking, I didn't put that rope there. Where did that rope come from? And he looked to see the rope and it was gone. He can't explain it other than Jesus, and I can't explain it. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. When bullets are flying past your head, call on the name of the Lord Jesus. When COVID is swirling around you, call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Call on Him. He says... In that day, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. <laughs> and there have been times in my life where I've been delivered like this. I had incredible pain one night. In, I don't know if it was in my uh, gallbladder or what. And I was calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus and I was reading his word out loud for an hour. At the end of the hour... I thought I was either going to call the ER or he was going to deliver me. <laughs> and guess what? I fell asleep on the couch and the morning I woke up like I had a full night's sleep and there was no pain and no need to go to the ER. It never came back after that. Now am I saying that happens every time? Not necessarily. Because the Lord knows what to do and he knows what plan to put in your heart when you call on his name to be delivered but the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous and the lord will deliver you out of all of them but it doesn't say when and so if the deliverance doesn't come immediately take heart he will deliver us out of all of our afflictions. But we just don't know when. So be strong and of a good courage. Now, Joel 3, he had me read this, and this is really encouraging to me. And I'll explain in a little bit. And brother, if you move over this way, just three feet, you won't be in the sun. <clears throat> I feel for you right now with the sun in your faith. Um... Joel 3, verse 1. Behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there 
for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Now at the end of this message, I'm going to hand out a paper that our brother Dave Mike back there uh, wrote up for me this week. He did research and put this all together, and it's really, really good and encouraging. So I'm going to hand that out at the end, so don't forget that paper. And if you're online, I'll email it to you. Uh, Just let me know your email. (laughs) That's about the Valley of Jehoshaphat. But really quick, Jehoshaphat was a was you know, a king back in 2 Chronicles 20, and we've talked about that a lot. And in that valley, they were surrounded by many, many enemies. How many of you have ever been felt surrounded by enemies? Surrounded by hardships? Surrounded by bad things? Jehoshaphat knows that feeling. And what did he do? What did Jehoshaphat do? Do you remember? He went to the Lord. He prayed. And then, as the Lord inspired him, it says that he called for the singers and musicians, and he sent them in first to praise the Lord And what did they say as they praised the Lord? Does anybody know? Second Chronicles 20, verse 20, uh, 21. As they went out before the army, they said, Praise the Lord, for His mercy endures forever. Does that sound familiar? (laughs) Did we not just sing that? His love endures forever. They sang that while they were surrounded by the enemies. They did not wait for deliverance before they praised the Lord and sang, believing His mercy endures forever. You see, some of us come to worship And we only worship the Lord from the bottom of our heart when we feel like it. When He has just brought us through something great. And that's wonderful to sing like your favorite team just scored the goal. When God has brought us through something. That is a great time to praise the Lord. But that's not the only time to praise the Lord. We need to praise the Lord and worship His name Not because of our circumstances, but because of who he is, period. That's why we worship the Lord. We praise the Lord based on his character, based on God loves us forever and ever and ever. God loves us so much that he bends close to hear our prayers. His mercy. How many of you have experienced God's mercy? How many times? A lot. (laughs) A lot of times. If you're like me, a lot of times. This week. (laughs) His mercy endures forever. His mercy gave us this beautiful morning. It wasn't because I did anything right. It's just a gift from Him. He said, I want to bless you. And my response should be, thank you. When we get a gift, I was just talking to somebody three weeks ago who wasn't sure that they would go to heaven when they die, even though they've been going to church their whole life. And they said, I'm not sure. And we talked about what Jesus did for them on the cross. And they said, yeah, I believe that. And we talked about how he raised from the dead, and they said, yes, I believe that. I said, well, (laughs) 
then you're, you're there. You're almost there. But why don't you believe that he has forgiven you? Why do you believe you have to earn it? And they said, I don't know. And so we went to Romans uh, chapter, uh, Romans 6, 23, which says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Look at the difference. The wages that we earn from sinning is death. You all know what wages are, right? It's like your paycheck. When we sin, the paycheck we earn is death. Spiritual separation from God forever and ever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever and ever. That's what we earn from sin. But look at the counterpart. He says, but the gift of God is eternal life. <laughs> eternal life. And it's a what? A gift. How do you earn a gift? Brothers and sisters, please tell me. How do you earn a gift? You don't. You don't. A gift is nothing you earn. How many of you have given somebody a gift in your lifetime? Raise your hand. Raise your hand online if that's you. Have you given a gift to someone? When you give that gift, what are you waiting for when the person receives the gift? What are you looking for out of them? Just to receive it. And then what? So you hand them a wrapped gift. <laughs> and then you give it to them and they take it. Yay, I have a gift. I have a gift. I have a gift. Is that what they do? Do they just keep it in that box? Do they say, wow, this is pretty wrapping paper. I'm going to put this on my shelf and enjoy it forever and ever. <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> they open it. And if they're little kids and the gift is sitting there for a few days or weeks, you almost can't keep them from opening that ahead of time, right? <laughs> they want to open it. That's the same with what Jesus did for us on the cross. He died for the sins of all men and women and children in all ages, all the world. All of their sins are paid for by the blood of the Lamb. But not everybody has applied that blood to their own sins. They have to open the gift. What happens to your heart when you see that person open the gift like this? <laughs> it's what I always wanted. Thank you so much. What happens to your heart? <laughs> it's just overflowing with, with love, right? Like, oh, that's what I hoped they would do when they opened the gift. Now, <laughs> do we sit there and go, okay, I gave you this gift. Now, I expect you to walk around like this, thinking about all the things you've done wrong the rest of your life. Is that what's in our heart when we give a gift? No. It shouldn't be. If it is, that's called abuse. A gift is a gift. And you give it willingly and lovingly. And all you hope for 
is that the receiver loves the gift and is thankful. Do you know that's what our Heavenly Father desires from us with the gift of salvation? <laughs> Just enjoy the gift. <laughs> we need to enjoy the gift. Now I want to read the rest of Joel 3. And it gets pretty wild here, but it is encouraging to those that love the Lord. Verse 3, he's talking about the nations that scattered God's people. He says, and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot. And have sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Look at how evil those people were. And look how God sees it. Yea, and what have you done? Have you to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon? And all the coasts of Palestine. Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Now, a lot of times we read these kind of passages and we go, why would God do something like that? Yet, what do we feel when God says, don't return evil for evil, but overcome evil with good? For I am the Lord... Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. How do we react when God says, Stop! Don't go into vengeance. Don't get your revenge. How do we feel when God stops us from getting our revenge on somebody that hurt us or our family? We're like, ugh, ugh, ugh. But when God righteously judges people for their wickedness a lot of times we say god why would you do that even though in our own hearts we want vengeance sometimes for when people hurt us but look at how wicked they were they gave a little boy so they could have a harlot they sold a little girl so they could drink a cup of wine. This really happened. And it really happens today in our world. It is still going on. And God sees it all. Verse 5. Because you have taken my silver and my gold. And have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that you might remove them far from their border. What? They sold the Israelites. They sold the Hebrews to the Grecians. Doesn't that sound like slavery? <laughs> there isn't just one people group this has happened to. Then he says... Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will return your recompense on your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans to a people far off for the Lord has spoken it. Then verse 9, proclaim this among the Gentiles. So he says, all you nations that are against the Lord, prepare yourselves to go to war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened. That's an interesting word in today's day, isn't it? 
And come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Now, this verse, boom, jumped out at me as I read. And what it says to me, if you look at the picture of what's going on here, now this is in the future yet, and that's what you'll see in the paper that I'll hand out. But if you're actually there in Jerusalem, watching all the nations rising up for war, surrounding Israel, what are we going to think if we didn't know Scripture? What would we think if we're standing here and all of a sudden over there, we see a whole line of soldiers in uniforms and helmets and Uzis. They're all lined up on that hill over there. And over there, by the gate, they're over there. And over there, they're over there. And over there, they're all, and they're surrounding us. And they're not just one line. It's like multitudes because it's nations surrounding us. What would we feel if we were sitting right here listening to somebody talk and preach, listening to a loving message, and all of a sudden all that showed up? What would our hearts naturally do? We'd be distracted, <laughs> for sure. What else? Our hearts would be safe. We'd be like, faith would be like, really? Our hearts would sink, yes. Yeah, two of you said our hearts would sink. Fear! Wouldn't fear just, boom? <laughs> I mean, we don't even have that. And look at how much fear is all over the internet. In our own Facebook posts. We don't even have the surrounding visual. And we're letting fear control us sometimes. And this is what's happening right here. God says, I am going to gather all these nations together for war. You see that? He says, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. So it looks like they're coming to annihilate Israel. And behind the scenes, what we can't see with our own eyes is that God's, God's bringing them in so that he can judge them. And we know because of Revelation, what happens next? <laughs> In one move, the Lord goes boom! And all those armies are wiped out. Boom. Do we believe that? is the same Lord that we serve today. <laughs> he says, verse 13, Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. That's the same valley. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. The stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters. And a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord 
dwells in Zion. Let's see, Nathaniel, can you grab that that uh, ream of paper there that's holding everything down? You can put my mug on top of the other papers. And hand everybody uh, a couple pieces of paper. Everybody can pick what paper you want out of there. You can actually pull the paper out of that wrapping so it's easier to hand out. And I'd like everybody to make a paper airplane. And if you don't know how to make a paper airplane, if you know how to make an airplane, raise your hand if you know how to make an airplane. Okay? If you don't know, go to one of those that knows and get help to make an airplane. And we're going to make airplanes because of what the Bible says. So go ahead and start getting those papers. One or two, whatever they want. Just, just let them choose there. By the way, now how many of you are thankful you know the Lord? <laughs> he is not done. He is not done. So as soon as you get a paper, go ahead and start making an airplane. Remember that innocent, simple childhood heart. Yeah, if, if you need to remember what it's like to be a child, <laughs> look at those little ones that are playing all around us. And I want to read this to you from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 to encourage our hearts even further. Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica, and he says, For this I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. 1 Corinthians 4.13 Meaning, those who are already dead. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Don't sorrow like those who have no hope in Jesus. If you have hope in Jesus... We can grieve, but we can't stay there in our grief because we are getting closer and closer and closer to seeing them again and living with them for all of eternity. Amen. Thank you, sister. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Which means we will not go before they go. <laughs> For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Can you believe that, Gideon? <laughs> then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up with them. If you have an airplane, throw it now. We shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We, in that day, when the Lord comes back, 
He will descend from heaven with the trump of the archangel, with a shout. And the dead in Christ will pop Amen. Out of the ground. But we will not go to the clouds before they do. They will receive their changed body in the twinkling of an eye, and so will we, according to 1 Corinthians 15. And then we'll be caught up with them in the clouds together. Forever and ever and ever and ever with the Lord. And I believe what happens next is we come with the Lord as an army to that great day of the Lord. At that valley of Jehoshaphat to, to help the Lord bring that judgment to earth. We'll be part of that army. Imagine that. We are part of the Lord's army now. But in that day, <laughs> we'll have our new bodies. And we will know as we've been known by the Lord, says the word. We will know just like the Lord knows us. Whew. I am excited about that day. But I'm not excited about the demise of people. But the sad truth is, is everyone has to make a decision for themselves. Choose you this day, says the Lord, whom you will serve. Whether it is the Lord God who created all things, Jesus, the Savior, or somebody else, we have the choice. Choose wisely. For we see what's coming in the end. Father, I thank you, Lord. Thank you again for this beautiful day. And Father, if anybody's watching and there's something in their heart, they maybe they don't yet believe that Jesus is Lord. And they want to, but they feel like they just can't. Father, I pray right now that you remove the veil from their heart, turn their heart toward Jesus, so the veil may be lifted, which the enemy has put there to blind them to the truth. And Father, help them believe now, today, right now. For it says, Lord, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Thank you, Father, for all those that already have put their trust in Jesus. Thank you for helping us to come to Jesus and be saved. Lord, help us get excited. Help us worship you for who you are and not just what you're doing for us in the moment. But help us to praise you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. Even when our strength is weak. Help us to praise you with all of our strength. And Lord, we thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We thank you, Lord, that you washed away our sins took away our sins through the blood of Jesus. Father, thank you so much for saving me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for adopting me into your family. Thank you, Lord, for adopting us into your family. Thank you that we are a great and mighty and loving family and that you're bringing us into more love. Thank you for the beautiful sounds of your creation around us that remind us of your majesty, how you thought of every little detail of the bird and the butterfly and the ant and even the sun and the moon and the stars. You are a great and awesome God and we love you, love you, love you.
We praise you and honor you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Nathaniel, will you hand out those other papers at this time as well? And if anybody has any prayer needs or any uh, anything on your heart that you just want to talk about, I'll sit here as long as you need today. And we'll, we'll just talk and we'll pray and we'll go to the Lord together. Otherwise, I think we have some uh, a ball to play with, some paper to play with. You can play at the park as much as you want. Go for a walk. Go over and look at the lake over there in the duck family and say hello to the people as you go and be sure to let Jesus shine God bless you thank you